<laughs> Welcome everybody to Good Friday service. It's nice to see so many of you. Um, we took as many people at a service Good Friday, so this is kind of a neat opportunity that we have. I'm going to mute everybody. Um, when it's your turn to when it's your turn to lead your part, um, you can unmute your own mic. If you need me to do it, just kind of let me know. Um, yeah, so I think we will get started. I'm going to share my screen. A huge thank you goes out to Jen Dickinson, who put this whole service together, uh, organized the whole thing, recruited all of y'all to lead, um, and made all these slides. She did a, just a fantastic job. So if next time you see her, give her a round of applause for her really, really good work. So early on in the Christian movement, Jesus' followers remembered his execution and his journey to the cross and to our salvation. And to this day, Christians participate in pilgrimages to the Holy Land to walk the path that Christ trod for us. So today we're going to journey with Jesus spiritually in our own kind of devotion. And before we start, there's just a few things that I actually want to say um, about this day and this passage. Um, Jesus' story it's a story that's full of a danger and betrayal, right? Even death, uh, but there's more, right? There's danger that we have added to the story, that we have compounded onto it. Uh, centuries of interpretation of powerful people trying to co-opt the power of this moment. And especially at a time like this, when hatred and bigotry are flourishing, Good Friday and the Christian texts that we read here today are really dangerous to Jewish people. They've been used to legitimize centuries of cruelty and anti-Semitism. As we listen to these stories, there are just a few things I want to be sure that we remember tonight. One is that death by crucifixion was a state-sanctioned um, punishment that was meant to terrorize and pacify the population for Roman rule. It was not ever something a religious group could do or could order to be done. So the Jews didn't kill Jesus. He was executed by the state. We also need to remember that at the time of Jesus' life, there were no Christians. There were only Jews. Jesus himself was Jewish, and all of his followers and those who believed him to be the Son of God were Jewish people. We should also remember that at the time of Jesus' life, the chief priests and the temple officials were not just religious leaders. They were government-appointed officials. They were entrusted with keeping peace in the region of Israel and Palestine, and they stood to gain power and money and influence if they kept their people quiet and well behaved. And everyone knows that Jesus was really starting to make a scene. Beyond this, the dangerous lurking evil in this story is not in a crowd of Jewish people or the heart of a Roman magistrate, but it's, it's really in the frightening ease with which we, God's children, can learn to hate one another. It's the shocking delight that we can take in calling for the death of one. This tendency that we human beings have to hurt one another is a powerful legacy of this day. The doctrine of atonement, as theologians call it, the idea that Jesus' death was, was required by God and that it's the best example of loving has caused a lot of pain. The idea that love requires suffering leads to domestic violence in our world, to physical abuse, but also to mental and emotional suffering. The idea that if we are devoted to our family or to our work or even to our church, that it should hurt us somehow, that's just wrong. The meaning of the cross is the triumph of love over death. It's not the requirement of death in order to prove love. But over the years, we've kind of gotten these things confused. The story is dangerous still, for if God, if Jesus knows betrayal, knows torture, knows suffering, knows injustice, knows even death, then God knows those deepest parts of ourselves that we keep hidden. God knows them. 
And if God knows those things, might we also be asked to face them? The story is dangerous. It still calls out to the most broken parts of our world, to those who are betrayed by the ones they love, those who are tortured or abused, government officials, judicial systems, people who know things aren't working right but don't do anything to stop it, to mothers who watch their children die, to any and all who feel that hope is dead. This story calls to those neglected corners, to those undesirable friends and it calls them to love, the community, and strangely, to hope. Perhaps there is hope in knowing that we are not alone. Perhaps the hope is in the way that people were so afraid of the thing that Jesus was doing that it must have been real. Perhaps the hope is in remembrance, in the way that laughter emerges clandestinely from awake as we remember the love and the joy of those lost. Perhaps the hope is in the quiet darkness where one light always shines. Friends, come, let us walk with Christ along the way of his cross. Where you go, we will follow. The first station in the Garden of Gethsemane will be led by Dave. Give him one second to reconnect. Now? Yep, go right ahead. All right. Then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, sit here while I go over there and pray. He took along Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to feel sorrow and distress. Then he said to them, my soul is sorrowful even to death. Remain here and keep watch with me. He advanced a little and fell prostrate in prayer saying, my father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. When he returned to his disciples, he found them asleep. He said to Peter, so you could not keep watch with me even for one hour? Watch and pray that you may not undergo the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Friends, let's enter a moment of silent reflection with some music from Jen. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Through your faithfulness, you have redeemed the world. Second station of the cross, Jesus is betrayed and arrested, will be led by Chris. While Jesus was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived accompanied by a crowd with swords and clubs who had come from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. His betrayer had arranged a signal with them, saying, the man I shall kiss is the one. Arrest him and lead him away securely. He came and immediately went over to him and said, Rabbi, and he kissed him. At this, they laid hands on him and arrested him.
Let's reflect together where in our own lives do we betray the Lord with our kisses. Through your faithfulness, O Christ, you have redeemed the world. We adore you. We bless you. The third station of the cross, Jesus is condemned by the religious council. Bob is going to lead us in this section. When day came, the council of elders of the people met, both chief priests and scribes, and they brought him before the Sanhedrin. They said, if you are the Messiah, tell us. But he replied to them, if I tell you, you will not believe. And if I question, you will not respond. But from this time on, the son of man will be seated at the right hand of the power of God. They all asked, are you the son of God? He replied to them, you say that I am. Then they said, what further need have we for testimony? We have heard it from his own mouth. How have we participated in religious groups that condemn God with us? We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Through your faithfulness, you have redeemed the world. The fourth station of the cross, Jesus is denied by Peter, will be led by Melanie. Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. One of the maids came over to him and said, you too were with Jesus the Galilean. But he denied it in front of everyone, saying, I do not know what you're talking about. As he, went down, as he went out to the gate, another girl saw him and said to those who were there, This man was with Jesus the Nazarene. Again, he denied it with an oath. I do not know the man. A little later, the bystanders came over and said to Peter, Surely you too are one of them. Even your speech gives you away. At this, he began to curse and to swear. I do not know the man and immediately a cock crowed. Then Peter remembered the word that Jesus had spoken. Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. He went out and began to weep bitterly. Friends, in what ways do we do Christ?
Through your faithfulness, O Christ, you have redeemed the world. We adore you. We bless you. At this station, Jesus is judged by Pontius Pilate and be led by Lisa. The Sanhedrin police found Jesus, led him away, and handed him over Pilate. Pilate questioned him, Are you the king of the Jews? He said to him in reply, You say so. The chief priests accused him of many things. Again, Pilate questioned him, Have you no answer? See how many things they accuse you of? Jesus gave him no further answer, so that Pilate was amazed. Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas and handed Jesus over to be crucified. Let's consider where has our desire to appease others hurt Christ's body? We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Through your faithfulness, you have redeemed the world. The sixth station, Jesus is scourged and mocked, will be led by Scott. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him scourged. And the soldiers wove a crown out of thorns and placed it on his head and clothed him in a purple cloak. And they came to him and said, Hail, King of the Jews. And they struck him repeatedly. How do we participate in groups that beat up the Christ in others? When Jesus wept the falling tears, in mercy flowed beyond the bounds. When Jesus groaned a trembling fear, seized all the guilty world around. Through your faithfulness, O Christ, you have redeemed the world. We adore you. We bless you. The seventh station, Jesus is condemned by the crowd to bear a cross, will be led by Robin. When the chief priests and the guards saw Jesus, they cried out, Crucify him, crucify him, Pilate said to them. Take him yourselves and crucify him. I find no guilt in him. They cried out, take him away, take him away. Crucify him, Pilate said to them. Shall I crucify your king? The chief priest answered, we have no king but Caesar. Then he handed him over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus out to what is called the place of the skull in Hebrew, Golgotha. Where in the world do crowds still call for the crucifixion of innocence? We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Through your faithfulness, you have redeemed the world. 
the eighth station, Jesus is helped by Simon of Cyrene, be led by Dave. The Roman police pressed into service a passerby, Simon, a Cyrenian, who was coming in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry the cross. Consider, friends, where have we forced others to carry the cross of Christ? <laughs> Through your faithfulness, O Christ, you have redeemed the world. We adore you. We bless you. The ninth station, Jesus meets the women of Jerusalem, will be led by Jennifer Dickinson. A large crowd of people followed Jesus, including many women who mourned and lamented him. Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me. Weep instead for yourselves and for your children. For indeed, the days are coming when people will say, Blessed are the barren, the wombs that never bore, and the breasts that never nursed. At that time, people will say to the mountains, Fall upon us, and to the hills, cover us. For if these things are done when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? Jesus says his death occurs in a green time when the wood is green. What does life look like when the time is dry? We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Through your faithfulness, you have redeemed the world. Tenth station, Jesus is crucified, will be led by Luann. When they came to the place called the Skull, they crucified him and the criminals there, one on his right, the other on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. Take a moment to reflect while we were in the act of crucifying and mocking him, Jesus begged that we would be forgiven.
Through your faithfulness, O Christ, you have redeemed the world. We adore you. We bless you. The 11th station, Jesus promises his kingdom be led by Annabelle. Now, now one of the criminals hanging there revealed Jesus, saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. The other, however, rebuking him, said in reply, Have you no fear of God, for you are subject to the same condemnation? And indeed, we have been condemned justly, for the sentence we receive corresponds to our crimes. But this man has done nothing criminal. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into, into your kingdom. He replied to him, Amen. I say to you today, you will be with me in paradise. Friends, how do we want Jesus to remember us from his sovereign throne? We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Through your faithfulness, you have redeemed the world. The 12th station, Jesus speaks to his mother and beloved disciple, will be led by Tanya. Standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas and Mary of Magdala. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple there whom he loved, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his home. Let's consider the kind of family that Christ wants us to be. Through your faithfulness, O Christ, you have redeemed the world. We adore you. We bless you. The 13th station, Jesus dies on the cross, will be led by Mizpah. Need it. Come on. Come on. Uh, 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 do it now. Uh? Okay. It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in afternoon because of an eclipse of the sun. Then the veil of the temple was torn down, torn down the middle. Jesus cried out in loud voice, Father, into your hands I, co I commend my spirit. And then he had said this, and when he had said this, he breathed his last We're going to listen and reflect on what he's saying. Yeah. 
We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Through your faithfulness, you have redeemed the world. The 14th and last station, Jesus is placed in the tomb. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was himself a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus, and Pilate ordered it to be handed over. Taking the body, Joseph wrapped it in clean linen and laid it in his new tomb that had been hewn in the rock. And he rolled a huge stone across the entrance to the tomb and departed. Friends, I invite you to sit with your feelings this day in the music and the time we spend together. Since we're all gathered here, I want to take just an opportunity if there's anything in particular that we should pray for tonight while we are gathered. Um, one thing that I'm thinking of a lot today, especially um, in this story and the, the people who had power and influence who didn't use it. I'm thinking about um, people in our government who could be helping who are not. I'm thinking about how people of color are now suffering and dying from this disease way more than white people and the systems, the many reasons why that becomes true. So I mourn um, all those unjust systems and all those people with power, like Pilate who could have done something and do nothing. What else, friends, should we pray for this day? Luann, very 
Monica, go ahead. Were there um, some solution to the fact that the farmers in Florida are plowing their crops under because they can't sell them? Okay. Yeah, while people line up really uh, upset me. Interest because they are hungry. Yeah. God of mercy, hear our prayer. <laughs> what else? All the people in the front lines still. Yeah. All the health, health care providers and people that work in the supermarkets and everywhere that continue to keep things running. Yeah. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Jen. So I, uh, I actually have some good news. Um, I was telling you about this earlier. I was able to talk to my doctor today. He sort of explained a lot more of my symptoms that I've been having and some of the pains and stuff. Um, so I kind of understand what's happening a little bit more. And he promised me by the end of the month, maybe the 20, as early as the 21st, he would take me in for surgery. He does surgeries on Tuesdays. So either the 21st or the 28th. So there's an end in sight. I'm excited. The surgery, God of mercy, hear our prayer. <laughs> yeah, what else should we pray for, Caroline? Uh, just uh, prayers of, how should I say, joy or celebration, even at this moment, how there's still a lot of people out there that are helping uh, others uh, that are trying to give food to people that don't have. I was reading on Facebook how somebody gave food to a lady. And then today I went to work. I work in law. So there's, there's a gas station in law. They were giving free gas to all the nurses and all the medical staff from 5 a.m. to 10 p.m. tonight, this night. I went there and put gas in my car. It's just prayers for people like that, that there's still uh, a lot of people out there who are supporting others. God of mercy, hear our prayer. What else should we pray for? Anything? Melanie, are you raising your hand? <laughs> I know I know someone that's waiting for test results, so She's very stressed and prayers for her. Everybody who waits, hear our prayer. Kristen. Um, for the people that, well, for all of us, we're not gonna be able to be physically with our family. And for some, that means people are gonna be alone and that might be very difficult. Yeah everyone alone and who can't be with their extended family and that's usually a time of celebration and gathering god of mercy hear our prayer god love you have one all right oh we ask that um, this COVID 19 should come to an end as soon as possible so that everything can get back to normal and that all the affected and patients um, should recover as soon as possible. Yeah. And then God of mercy, hear our prayer. Okay. And is there one more from Stacy? Um, prayer of joy today, we received something in the mail from Pastor Megan, something to keep us busy. <laughs> I'm so excited to see some results of your busyness, maybe on Sunday. <laughs> Aw. God of mercy, hear our prayer. All of you kids are giving me so much joy in life right now. It's so great to see you on these videos. Thank you for being with us. Anything else that you want to pray for? We'll end. All right. Then let us pray. God of mercy, in some ways, we find ourselves particularly at home this evening, in a moment when it feels like death has won. When Jesus, you lie dead in a tomb. When evil thinks it has triumphed. 
when hatred seems to have won the day. We feel this right now. We feel the grief that your people must have felt. We're not sure what to hope for. We don't know what lies ahead. We know we can't help ourselves. So God, we lift our prayers, our hearts, our worries, our fear, our anxiety, all to you. We seal our hearts in your tomb this evening, trusting that you will raise us too, that this is but a stop on the journey, that there is more path that lies ahead, the stations of the cross will extend, and that we will meet you. Lord Jesus Christ, who stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace, so clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who live in tombs of darkness to knowledge and love of your blessed freedom given to us through Jesus Christ, to whom be all honor and glory and dominion now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you everyone so much for being here tonight. Huge special thanks to Jennifer Dickinson for putting this beautiful service together and uh, all of you excellent leaders. It's just so wonderful to hear all of your voices and see your faces. Um, if you downloaded the bulletin packet, then you know that tomorrow is Easter vigil. Like we're not waiting for Sunday. I, who can wait? It's like we need it. Like we need some Easter ASAP. Right? So we're just going to start when it gets dark tomorrow. That's it. Just like when it gets dark, we're going. There's an Easter vigil liturgy for you. Light a candle in defiance, you know, and hope. Um, in spite of everything that's happening, light a candle for those gorgeous Sango Kid smiles for whatever is making you um, feel like there is joy and love in the world. And post your picture on Facebook if you would like. Um, you know. Otherwise, we'll see you on Sunday morning, okay? Friends, go in peace to love and serve God. Amen. 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 I believe. I believe. <laughs> how do we leave? <laughs> how do we leave? I'm looking how we leave. Actually, I'm, I'm going to end it. I just want to keep looking at you. <laughs> Good to see you guys. Thank you so much for coming. And Bogart came. I saw him. It felt inappropriate to yell out Bogart in the middle of solemn. <laughs> I know. Oh, well. And then he wouldn't leave. I was like, Billy, come and get him. <laughs> Does he have a bow tie to wear on Sunday? No, I'll find something. <laughs> Have a good night. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Bye. Bye. You doing okay? Everybody all right? You're okay? We're okay. You okay? Okay. <laughs> it really looks like you're sitting in the church. Isn't that That's hilarious? a great background. <laughs> yeah, it's nice. <laughs> I like it. It's funny. Everybody prepare your background for Sunday. We'll all be sitting in church. Yeah. I wish. <laughs> I'll try. I'll be Someday mm -hmm. again. I see you that we shall see the goodness of God in the land of the living. Amen. See you on Sunday. Good night. Good night.